Welcome to this first module in the workshop series. In this video, we'll be starting to take a look at QSQL, which is the inbuilt table query language within Q. And as the name suggests, it's got an SQL-like syntax. Now, there are other ways to perform operations on tables within Q, but for those of you that are beginners and also maybe have some experience with SQL, it's likely QSQL is going to be a lot more intuitive and easier for you to follow. Um, so in this section, we're going to start looking at some of the basic features of QSQL. And to do that, we'll be using a data set from the New York City um, Taxi and Limousine Commission. So the data set is from um, early 2009. And to start off, we're just going to load in that data set. So um, we can hit that button and load in the data we're going to need for this module. And then once that's run, we can move down here. So the first thing to do um, is to say, okay, what tables do I have within this data set? Um, and to do that, we can run a very simple command in Q, which is tables with an open and close square brackets. Um, and you can see when that's run, it should return the tables that are in my Q session. Cool. So I've got four tables um, named here. Um, now I can simply inspect a table by just calling its name. Tables are a first order data type within Q. So you can just call their name explicitly to retrieve them. Um, so that's perfectly fine. Now you can see here it's spitting out all of my columns um, across the top um, and then my rows down um, uh, vertically as you would expect. But you can see here it's a bit truncated. It's kind of hard to read. I don't get a sense of the entire data set. Um, so I'm going to give you a few other commands that are easier to uh, use and uh, preferable to use before you just call the entire data set into memory. Um, so these are the three functions and um, there are three inbuilt keywords within Q. The first one being count, um, which does sounds like it does. It basically will count your records. Um, and in, in this case, it's number of rows in the table. Um, the second one is calls. Um, call stands for columns. So that's going to retrieve all the columns you have. Um, and then the, the third one here is meta and meta basically will return our table schema. So let's run this cell and um, we can see we've got about um, 41 million rows um, and then you can see here I'm sisting out my columns um, and then with the meta command it looks um, a little bit different so you can see I've got the columns here listed under C um, but I'm also getting some additional information with meta that I didn't get with calls alone um, so the first one here T stands for data type so I'm going to go and jump to my um, code.kx.com page, um, what, which I've linked here. And I'm, it, this brings me to the data types page on the reference card. So this reference card page has got a lot of other um, useful information. Basically, um, any keyword or function, um, it's going to be documented here. Um, so this is going to become your best friend while learning Q. Um, and you can click through and see we've got keywords, operators, iterators, etc. cetera. Um, the bit I'm talking about right now is our data types. Um, so let's jump back here and have a look at our data type. So we've got the first three here are D, M and S. And if we check our reference card and we look at the C column. So if we scroll down and look for D, D stands for date, M is month and S is symbol. So in that way, you're able to find out what data types you have in your table. Um, We'll be looking at data types and some other data types in more detail later. Um, but just to point out, if you're used to using maybe SQL or Java, um, you can come here and check out the alternative data type within that language, um, which can be useful for newcomers. Um, so back to our meta. Um, the second column here is F, which stands for foreign key. And they're basically a way of establishing relationships between tables. Um, so you've got one table, you can have a foreign key relationship with another table, and that will be indicated on whatever column has got that relationship that will be shown here. And then this final column here, A, stands for attributes. So attributes are simply a way of tagging your data to improve performance. Um, so for example, you can do a sort on your data, um, and that's basically just telling KDB this data is already sorted and it will make your lookup faster because it knows that additional information about the data set. Um, both of these things are a slightly more advanced concepts. We won't be going into detail in this workshop, but will be in future courses. Um, but it's good to be aware of what they are when you're checking out Meta um, in any case. 
Okay, so let's use some QSQL. So first of all, we can run something very simple like select from small trips. So, so for far, that's looking very similar to SQL. I think the only difference maybe is um, in SQL, you would, might put an asterisk in between the select and from here um, to return all columns. For QSQL, you don't need to do that. When you don't have any columns selected, it, the by default will call all the columns back. Um, and then when you do want to select your columns, so say for example, we wanna take um, vendor and pickup time back, as well as fair, we're just gonna separate them with a comma. And you can see now I'm only getting three columns back rather than the entire data set. Fairly straightforward so far and fairly similar to SQL. Um, so let's do some filtering on our data. Um, so first of all, we're gonna filter on our rows. So we're taking our specific columns we're interested in back. So we've got date, month, vendor, passengers, fare and tip from trips. And then you can see I'm using the where clause. And then I've got two um, constraints here. So the first one is where date is minimum date. And the second one is where tip is greater than 20. So depending on which one's first, that's the one that will be evaluated first. So in this example, dates, this date clause is going to happen first and then the tip um, clause is going to happen afterwards. So when we run this, we should be able to see that um, it's all for the first date and my tips are all greater than 20. So for example, if I change that to something like 40, you could see, yeah, that seems to be working okay. These tips have increased. Um, so that's something, this, this ordering of our constraints is super important for performance. Um, and that really comes down to how the KDB database is structured, which we've illustrated in this diagram here. Um, so this is a typical um, structure of a KDB database. Not all of them are like this, um, but a lot of them are. So at the top level here, this is your database. And then as you go down, you can see I've got this split up by dates. And this is a date partition database. So it basically means there's a subdirectory within each database with and, and it's partitioned by date. Um, and then if I go down the next level, you can see this is where I have my table name. And then down the last level here, these are going to be my column files. So things like my vendor and passengers would be in here. And then you can see for the second date, I've got my table again, and then I'll have all my columns listed here as well. Um, so we're posing a question with that in mind, asking which query runs faster. So the first one is selecting the same set of columns and then I'm putting um, a date clause in and then my tip clause in. And then in the second statement, I'm doing the same column uh, selection again, but my where constraints are just flipped the other way around. So I'm doing my tip clause first and then my date clause. So have a little think about that um, and let's look at the solution. So we're saying the first one runs faster um, and let's test this out with some code. So you can see we're running the statements um, here, but we were putting this backslash T in front, um, which is basically a system command, which gives us back both the time and the space used by that command. And um, we can actually get rid of S, which stands for space, because in this example, we're only really interested in time for now. Um, and you can see the first one took just 19 milliseconds, where the second one took almost three seconds or, or more than three seconds. Um, so that's really, really, powerful just you're getting the exact same data set back but um one is super fast and the other one is much slower um so the reason for that is how this database is laid out and hopefully that makes sense so let's just look at this one so for this example i'm um selecting for my trips table where date is minimum date so what happens in this example my query comes in here it looks for where date is minimum date so it's only going to look in this directory and then any subsequent constraints like the tip constraint is only going to happen on this tip column further down. So I've only actually accessed this part of the database. Whereas in my second um, statement, I'm first filtering on where tip is 20, which means I'm going to check all the tip columns. So where tip is 20 here, where tip is greater than 20 here and so on the whole way down my entire database. And then I'm going to do my filtering on date at the very end after after that data is filtered on tip, which means you're checking all of these tips in all of these um, directories um, when in, in actual fact you don't need to. Um, so that's how Q gets a lot of its performance over other more traditional relational based um, databases. And this is called Columnar based filtering. OK, so. Um, Another thing we want to just show is assignment in queue. So we 
do assignment by using colon. Um, I know in some other languages you might use equals to assign um, some data to a variable. In Q it's colon. Equals, as, as we'll see a little bit later on, is reserved for equality. Um, so when I'm uh, selecting my columns, I can also do something like this. So I'm just doing a plus between the fair plus the tip. And then I'm saying I want to create a new column called total and I want to um, assign the result of fair plus tip to that column. So if I run this, you should see um, that returns. I might just hit the run button. OK, so you can see here I've got this new column called total, which is the sum of fair plus tip. Now tip is zero, so that's not that interesting. Let's just make tip greater than zero um, and see what we get. So we can see here, yep, so one plus seven is eight, uh, one plus 15 is 16, etc. So that's done what we expected to do. Um, so we can add columns like this just using our um, simple operators. Um, one more thing to mention in this video um, before I give you a chance to try some exercises. Um, we have this virtual column I within all our tables in Q. So it exists by default and it, you won't see it when you run meta on the table, but it is there for us to use and it's implicitly available in the select phrase. So for example, I can run something like count. So I'm counting I um, and I basically means index and um, in the case of tables that will refer to each row. So I'm saying count each row from trips where I've got my filter here on date and then where passengers is two. And you can see here, this is returning the count of um, that result. Um, so that's just something useful to know. It's useful in cases where maybe you don't know the column names um, or you don't want to type them out. Um, if you just want to do a quick count, it's very easy and quick to use. Um, also, it means you can apply these count statements over tables with different column names um, because it's generic and it's available in every table. Um, so that's our uh, basics into QSQL. We've got a lot more um, reading that we suggest. So you'll see here we're linking to the code.hex.com page and also our Q4Mortals book. So the Q4Mortals book is an excellent, excellent resource. Most of you are probably already familiar with it, written by Jeffrey Bohr. Um, and he's got entire chapters on all these topics we'll be touching on today um, with a lot more background and in-depth uh, discussion around, you know, for this example of QSQL, he goes into a lot of detail on um, QSQL compared to SQL um, and a lot more um, in-depth discussion around everything. So definitely head over there and um, do some more reading. Um, we've got some exercises here just before um, we jump into those. We just want to point out here. So you'll see in, in the code cells we're using comments um, and we sometimes have them as double forward slashes and sometimes they're single forward slashes. Um, so that's how comments in Q are indicated. Um, and they can be on their own line or in line with some code. So for example, if I had one plus four here or 34, <laughs> that'd be 35 and I can have my comment at the end. That could also be a single forward slash. Um, it's down to the developer's preference, whether they use single or double, um, double forward slash. Um, so just wanted to point that out. Um, okay, so we've got two little exercises here, just um, refreshing on the stuff we've gone through in that first section and um, have a go with those check out the expected output to help you if you're stuck um, and then you can check your solution at the end um, and then i'll see you in the next video